Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and are you counting? This is a series with the 2020 census, and they have graciously allowed us to visit with the census people that actually do the work on the ground. And we do this once a month to be sure that everybody is counted. We absolutely have to have you counted. And today we are visiting with my new best friend. Now you all know I only talk to best friends. So this is my new best friend. Ah, and it is, his name is, what is your name? Robert. <laughs> my new best friend and I can't even remember his name. Robert Sue, and he is a partnership in the Chinese community. And as you know, I just love our Chinatown. It is really special. It is the oldest Chinatown in the United States. And unlike the Chinatown in San Francisco, it was not created to be a Chinatown. It grew into a Chinatown. So it's a very special place. There's lots and lots of Asians speaking at least seven different Asian languages. It is a marvelous, really marvelous place and so many great people. So I am excited to meet Robert and that is going to be his mission with the census 2020. So Robert, hello. Hello, aloha. <laughs> aloha. Yeah. Ni hao ma. So, ni hao. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very good. <laughs> but my one, okay. And other than Shesha, that's it. That's my, the extent of my Chinese. So tell us about Robert. Tell, tell me about you. Yeah, my name what is Robert. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And so you, how long have you been, all these, uh, that you are, uh, with us as a Chinese expert? I actually just started uh, a couple months ago. It's kind of new experience, but I feel very excited about it. Uh, finally, I can really try to use my skill of my mother's native language skill to help our Chinese community. And I've been told all this time that Chinese community is being undercount and that is the nature, yeah, because most of Chinese is more introvert and they don't try to, you know, deal with the government, you know, any kind of event. So I think that that's why census, uh, Bureau of Census decide that we need to try to promote and push, make sure we can get an accurate and a true count uh, for all Chinese community that can help our you know, state and our community. Well, you know, uh, we have so many people from different parts of Asia, and some of those are from countries where they're terrified of the government and would not talk, would definitely not uh, give them all of this information. So that means that they're comfortable with you. You've met everybody, well, not everybody, but most of the people in Chinatown, have you? Well, that's very good, you know, uh, questions. And uh, about a couple of weeks ago, recently, I was invited by Shemina University, and there's a local you know, housing foundation uh, to make a speech presentation to a new Im immigrants. And I can see the reaction for those people. The first thing the concern is, will I have any trouble? I'm so new in this country. So I had to reassure Everything that what they report, they file, answer the question, you know, questionnaire, is hundred percent confidential. It will not impact them at all. So I, you know, I mentioned about even though I work in tax department before, it's very confidential, but it's not as you know secure as this one because even FBI, CIA, or immigration office. Even a court subpoena cannot retrieve any census data for law enforcement purpose. So I had to reassure that one. And I'm glad that they feel a lot more relief. They say they're going to spread out the word to their friends. And I think that's very good, you know, uh, uh, 
milestone for me to get involved with a new immigrant group, to release their, their worry, concern about the census. Well, I am glad to see you, and I'm, I'm really delighted with the whole program that the census has done to identify people from different communities to be able to have them, the people in the community, comfortable with your questions, feeling safe that they can answer the questions, and that the government is not going to come get them. So I am, I thank you for your service for what you're doing. I think this is a marvelous program. So thank you. Now, in our Chinatown, we have seven different Asian languages. How do you navigate seven different Asian, Asian languages? To be honest with you, I, I've been doing some research. There are about more than 100 different Chinese organizations in Chinatown. And, you know, oh, yes. yeah, that's a lot. But there are only two major organizations that can coordinate. They have an authority. I mean, they have a you know, connection to be able to unify everybody together. And recently, I had a meeting with Chinese Chamber of Commerce. They are specialized in the business, you know, all the business merchants in Chinese society, and United Chinese Coalitions. They are specialized with all nonprofit organizations that in Chinese community. So we need to, these two big groups to help to you know, support the whole activity. I'm glad you know, after multiple communications and also the government officials uh, from Taiwan, Republic of China, they actually, the Director General Chen is very supportive. He is trying to help to sponsor and support this, promote this 2020 census. So I feel very competent and comfortable with from uh, Chinese community leaders, from uh, the foreign diplomat organizations, uh, the leader over there to support us. And we, you know, I also involved with some university that volunteer to help the new immigrant group support and housing support. So I feel uh, we're gonna have a lot better result compared with previous censors. Well, now, we will have to go. I will take you to see some ordinary people in Chinatown. So we will go to Keikaliki Mall and walk through the marketplace. There you will meet great people, but these are ordinary people. These are not, they don't belong to the different societies, but these are some great people. And trust me, you will love it. Just walking through there and see all the people from the different countries that are selling their vegetables, it is just fabulous. So, yeah, I, I that, actually that's oh, a promise. Yeah, sure, <laughs> appreciate that. I actually, I'm walking around Chinatown almost every day, so I believe <laughs> they kind of they kind of get familiar with my face. <laughs> with this guy, well suit and tie, well shirt and tie, every day walking around with a census bag. <laughs> so, so pretty soon I'll be a mayor of yeah, Chinatown. I, guess, <laughs> I have you met the mayor of Chinatown? I saw the there is the, one, you know. Yeah, there's one I've seen here. I saw the, the 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 news before. Yeah, very admiring. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. yes, I'm sure that they're not used to seeing somebody with a shirt and tie on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's okay. That's, now, do uh, can you explain? Tell our audience what the benefits are of filling out the census. What do we gain? from filling out the census and why everybody needs to do this. Sure, yeah. You know, every year, federal government distribute more than $675 billion for the whole nation. And the way the criteria for them to make the business management decision to distribute the funding is actually go by the census resort. And it's so important if we don't respond, the money might go to other states. So I, I know we all work hard. We pay our fair share of taxes to federal government. 
In the meantime, we deserve to get our fair share of money back to our community to help our students, you know, our you know, uh, hospitals, and any kind of a charity organization, even highway, fire, and disaster recovery, all these funds can be used to help our you know, citizens here. And that is one of the you know, number one impact from economic perspective. It also impact our congressional seat in the Congress. Uh, if we don't respond, then we might lose the person can bring our voice up to Capitol Hill. Uh, it happened to Ohio State, they lost two congressman seats in Capitol because- what, what's, what, Who lost what state? Ohio State. Uh, they lost really? two, yeah. And Texas State, I heard they got four additional seats because their census result is so good. So well, somehow now, we I need to- I have been telling everybody, yeah, I have been telling everybody that we have enough population for a third seat. We do. If everybody in the state of Hawaii fills out the form, we can have a third seat. After all of these years of being a state, we should get a third seat, especially if Ohio lost. Tell them we want that seat. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so all yeah. you, <laughs> our teamwork will make it happen. Yeah. So it we'll is. Make it happen. Yeah. We had to we had to teamwork together, you know, and, and to make sure, yeah. you know, our voice, our count really reach out, and so they can know, you know, we do deserve to have a third seat. Yes, I fully agree. It is. That, yeah, that will yeah. help us. Yeah, yeah, that will help us. Yeah. So, uh, how many people are in the area that you cover? Do you know? Well, again, um, uh, how many? The population of Chinatown is what? Do you know? To be honest, or about, let me say it. You know, I look yeah. at Chinese in the last census, the populations, you know, we actually is at, you know, number five in the whole state wise. And in the state. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we have, you know, a little bit under 200,000 populations. Uh, but when I talk mm -hmm. to some Chinese community leaders, say, how could it be so low? We should be higher than that. I said, that's right. Let's come out, everybody participate, so we can bring up the count to match the reality. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because there's a lot of well, silence outside, behind the scenes somewhere that we don't see yes. it. Yeah. That is exactly what I was saying, how many people are afraid and they don't speak out. And um, then I think, because we get to choose, you have Hawaiian Chinese. So how is that counted? Does that count in the Chinese category or in the Hawaiian category? Because that's a huge, huge population of Hawaiian Chinese. So how's that counted in terms of, because I think you're right. I think there's more Chinese, I think. Sure, yeah. But they didn't ask me. <laughs> well. We will make sure we come up a good count this time. We got to make sure. We got to make we sure. We got to make sure. Yes. Yeah, that's we right. We got to make sure. Yeah, that, yes. That's why I have heavy yes. weight on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you can you can do this because you have met the important Chinese, and then of course we have so many Chinese in in business and in the legislature and the city council and the county councils across the state. So we should, there should be more than that, I'm sure. So we've got to find the people that aren't being counted. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you notice, since you've been in Chinatown area for 10 years, the personal personality of Chinese, they are more introverts. I, I remember when we were young kids. Yes. You know, there's a for 5,000 year history in Chinese history. Most of citizens, they don't care who is emperor. As long as I can have enough harvest to feed my family, I'm fine. Who will be a king, emperor, I don't mind. And because that personality lasts for 5,000 years, majority of people keep low. And we need to encourage those, those people, to educate them, communicate with them, you know, 
if you don't say anything, you will all be always hiding in the corner. You lose your benefit that you deserve to have. And we need to get our fair share of funding come to our community. It's not only for ourselves, for our children, grand grandchildren, you know, for our parents, our relatives, you know, our neighbors. And it's so important that we have to have the actual count. And it takes some time, effort to convince them, you know, to you know, encourage them, to engage them into this activity. I think that's very important. I, I, I like it. it, it's a big challenge. Every day I feel so tired at the end of the day when I get home. I, I'm thinking about it, it's a very in, you know, achievement feeling because I get some more people that understand better about census. They say, if I heard say, oh, I'm gonna tell my neighbor or my cousin about this, then I know I make a successful day today. Well, you know, I think that um, because you are Chinese and um, just listening to you, they know that you are one of, that you belong and that you're not some foreigner trying to do something. And I think that may, will go a long way to those people that are afraid, those people that are quiet, like you said, that don't make waves, they just go to work and come home. Um, I really believe that you are the right person at the right time in the right place. Well, and I, that is so precious. That is so precious to getting those people to feel comfortable enough to answer the questions. So, and especially since they aren't hard questions, it's not <laughs> like you're taking an exam or anything. Sure. <laughs> you're not yeah. asking them anything they don't know. Because census, they actually, yeah. they don't even ask your social security number, ask your, your bank account numbers. They will not touch you, those kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I ask them, don't worry, it will never happen, something bad. Somebody try to put a scam and cheat your money. No, government will not do that. <laughs> you know, we are here to help well, everybody. Yeah. So that, um, in making it clear, I guess, can you tell us now where the money, the, the federal government collects the taxes that we all pay and then they portion it out. So what, what kinds of things does the uh, federal government fund in Hawaii other than the highways, but what else? Well, I look at the, Fiscal year, I think 2018 report, uh, we get about 3.6 billion dollars into the state. The number one funding, billion? yes, the number one funding <laughs> was spent for the money, it actually is Medicare. And a lot oh, of, of course. yeah, yeah. And, and then there are some of Medicaid, but school will impact a lot. Yeah. School, you know, not only the, you know, the funding for the school facility, the school hub mail, all those, you know, or, or, or you know, are from the, a lot of them are from federal funding. The scholarship grants for the college higher education students, that can be, you know, are used for the census money too. So uh, hospitals, uh, you know, fire departments, emergencies, you know, there's a lot of funding that we, you know, you know, we use that total about 55 programs that are used in the state for, from those funding. So oh. we have a reserve money. So if we don't answer, yeah. So if we don't answer, then we don't get our share. Is that it? Exactly. You know, you have more part, right? You know, there's all, all you know, a saying in, in China, there's too many monk, but we don't have enough juke, the rice soup to feed the monk. That's the same thing. If you don't, yeah, that's the same. Too many monks, but not enough rice, the, the rice soup. So if you don't have enough yeah. funding here, how can we help all the community people? Because the people didn't respond. You are using the share of the people that they actually respond. Yeah, so yeah, so we, we want to make sure so we... Even if, you don't, yeah, <laughs> even if you don't respond, you still, get, still the apply, yes, get the money. Yes, you get the money. It's not yeah. fair to yeah. your peer, you know, your own race people, you know, your own com community. So we got to do our share of efforts. You responded, the money come in. Everybody equally, we got 
what we deserve to have. So, so again, uh, we all file tax. We send tax every year to government. And they, they, in return, they will sponsor and support us, distribute the money. Then we don't get our fair share. And this money could go to other states. And while we abandon this, especially it's no cost for us. Not say you buy lottery, you had to put money, you buy, buy the ticket. You don't have any cost at all. You just respond, spend about maybe 20 minutes, fill the form and send it out, or do it online. And you know, we're gonna have uh, some you know, follow-up communities, you know, uh, 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 presentation to show them how to do this census form response or how to do online. Uh, but it is a small investment, spend your 20 minutes, you will bring a lot of money come to our community to help our community and support our community. Now, how do you help those people you just said online? And I know in your literature, in this book here, it says that the online, they have 59 languages, but if you don't speak English um, to begin with, so how do you get online to get those 59 languages? So. Uh, <laughs> good question. This is actually <laughs> 2020. So and, how do you? Yeah, this is the first time. Huh? This is the first time that the, the you know the Bureau of Census will conduct the the questionnaire besides traditional paper form or, or telephone call. We'll have it online, and so far, uh, we we offer 12 language, foreign language online available if you file online. And very fortunately, the Chinese is in one, you know, one of the, the 12 languages that you know, uh, uh, available online. So I believe you know, those Chinese you know, uh, residents, if they get online, when they see Chinese characters, the word you know, sentence on the screen, they will feel more comfortable and more relaxing, say, hey, yeah, I, I know what I should do. So I think the result will be a lot, a lot better than traditional paper form that, that had only English. Yeah. Yes. Well, because if they mail out something to you, it, the, it will be addressed in English. So what is it that gets them to open it because it's addressed in English? What, how do you prepare people in, in your area? say that this is coming to you in the mail and it will be addressed in English so that they feel comfortable with opening the letter. How do you, I, I can, if you, so it's not going to have the Chinese characters on the envelope. Well, good so question. how do you get them, <laughs> yeah. how do you get them comfortable enough to open the envelope? Very good question. And that's how I'm here. <laughs> My partner here, because people to receive the mail, we already have a full communication, awareness, education, training. Let them know you're gonna receive the mail in March. Then they know what is that for. So, so that is how we had to try our best to reach out to every communities, so they can feel, understand, they can expect there's something coming in in the mail in March, and basically. You know, they, they can get rid of fears. At least they pay attention to it. And that's very important. So uh, our communication, collaborations, uh, education to the community are very important. And good thing is, you know, the sensors might start as early as you know, uh, March 12th, because online, the official census day is April 1st. And that is very close to Chinese New Year events that you know in Chinatown for so long. You know, usually, you know, around, you know, end of January or beginning of February. Yeah. yeah. And so it's a good timing to remind them during that, you know, that kind of event. Next month, pretty soon you're going to receive the reminder, the information, you know, invitation from Census Bureau about the census. I think that will help. It's a good timing. Very good. <laughs> so. Yeah, that is, that's a good idea to get them ready for receiving this so that it's, you know, I'm sure they get so much in the mail. I, at least I do all kind of ads and all kind of things. And you say, well, why am I getting this? And what is this about? So uh, I love that idea that 
that you're getting them ready to receive it yeah. so that you talk to people so that they are not afraid. And, and that's the big thing with me is so that immigrant people are not afraid, not just in Chinatown, but all over. Immigrant people are not afraid to answer. Sure. So they don't afraid yeah. is a is a scam mail. They know our government is gonna send something to them. So they have expectation in their heart. They feel more you know comfortable and feel safe. There's no problem. This is not a scam. I don't have to worry it's to open it. <laughs> it's gonna when yes. I open it, I'm helping my community, helping myself to bring some more federal money in. They will feel proud of themselves. They are doing the right thing to practice the civic right. I hadn't thought about that, of feeling proud that they're doing something. And we got to remember to make sure that everybody understands that they feel proud that they're supporting not just themselves, but all of us. I like that. I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> You're doing it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. You know? <laughs> now, when you have all these different dialects in Chinese, so do you speak other dialects? Uh, what do you speak? I actually speak uh, uh, Chinese Mandarin. I also uh, speak uh, Taiwanese. Uh, Cantonese, I can understand a little bit. But the good thing for the Chinese, even though you have so many different dialects, if we write down, the character all the same. We can read and understand what we write. Oh. <laughs> that is a good thing. Oh, good. Uh, uh, yeah, we have the same writing, same characters. The same characters. Same character. So it doesn't matter. So they hear one thing, but they see another thing. So they see in the characters. So they so that it doesn't matter which dialect you have. The writing is the same. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. That's, that's... Uh, we appreciate the first emperor okay. in China. He unified the whole nation, built a great war, and unified the characters. Okay. That's very good. Now that was smart. Yeah, that's it's... smart. Yes. Because otherwise, the country That's, could be divided to hundreds of different small countries. China is so huge, right? So I think he's smart, yeah. Yes. <laughs> he's very smart. That is smart. That was smart, yes. <laughs> and yeah, that's, how, that's unifying people. Because in, even here in villages and farms and things that where you don't have this kind of conversation, it's, that's a way of reaching people that can't be reached like like we're doing here sure so you have to go out to the farms and the villages and what have you and because so many of the people that sell in chinatown get vegetables from people that live in kuhuku and way out so there's a this communication at least there's some a way of them seeing as, as i guess that's what I'm, that they can write and everybody understands. Does everybody write in Chinese calligraphy? If you are Is new, it still done? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because a lot, of, I notice a lot of Chinese family, they actually send their ch children to Chinese school too. And that's one of the yes, area. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of Chinese school in town. And, you know, yes. I, I actually did some volunteer work for seven years teaching Chinese school too. So I know a lot of parents send their kids even though, you know, we are in the United States, but they don't want their children to forget about the root, forget about the cultures. So they actually send the children to Chinese school. And those children is also one area we can use them, for, you know, use their communication with the parents. We educate them in school. So school is one of the, the, the areas we try to reach to. So not only the regular school, we go to Chinese school, try to communicate with them, educate them, so they can go back to talk to their parent or grandparent about census. That's one of the good channels that we can do. Now that's a great idea. That is a wonderful way to do that. Well, you know, I am so pleased to have spent this time with you, and we will have to walk through Chinatown. Okay, I'm looking sure. forward to it. Sure, Sam. Yes, yeah, thank and you so I, much. <laughs> I thank you, but to our audience, Remember, you must do this. We absolutely have to have another member of Congress. And only, only if you account it, can we do this. Only you must be counted. 
and I thank all of you. And Robert, it's a pleasure spending this time with you. And again, thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.